It's the same wedding. It's the same celebration no matter what table you're at. You okay? You got something brewing up here. This is where I'm sitting, so if you end up in the high teens, you know where to find me. Today will not suck. Hi. Hello, my god. I am Renzo. I've achieved puberty and I'm in a rock band. I'm Walter and I've also reached puberty. I'm Francie Milner's first nanny. I can smell the toilets from here. That's how well we know the bride and groom. I'm Eloise. I got dumped by Francie's brother, the uh, best man back there at table one. Oh, uh, no kidding. This is a great table. It's a great one. <laughs> no, it isn't. Yeah, it is. <laughs> nah, it isn't. We didn't think you'd be coming. You RSVP'd no, and then yes, on an RSVP card that you barbecue. After two years, you break up with me over text? Good luck with your future endeavors? Were you firing me with right the- Right here. Do you know what Francie's mother calls table 19? The table that should have known to send regrets, but not before sending something nice off the registry. What? The table that could disappear in the middle of the wedding and no one would even notice. The table of people they don't care about? How are we doing back here? Let's go. What if you came here for a different reason today? What if you went away with something better? We could be beautiful. Do you ever have that kind of day where the things that come so easily to everyone else just seem so elusive? So like <gasps> no. Yeah, me neither. I come to you asking for Megan Ann's hand in this dance and the rest of her body along with that hand. This is not going to happen. So you could just stand awkwardly in front of another table. <laughs> it was lovely dancing with you. How did I not just get kissed? It happens more often than you think. You are Romeo and Juliet, and we all wish you the same happy ending. I will give you twenty dollars if you stand up right now. All right. <laughs> what, <clears throat> honey? Oh. How long have you worked here? Give it up for these guys right here. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for being here. Congratulations on the movie. It's hilarious. It's fantastic. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Uh, an unbelievable cast, including the three of you. I mean, the list kind of just goes on and on and on. What was it like working on this every day? It seems like there was just a bench of amazing people to hang out with. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true, and we were all sort of, you know, in between waiting in one room. And we were all just in that one room, enjoying each other. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, we, we did, uh, where we did most of it was on like a I don't know what, what like it was like a sporting range where you could like shoot bow and arrows and like golf and I went fishing like in between days. Yeah, Wyatt <laughs> made the most of it for sure. You it stayed really there fun. too, right? Yeah. It was like it was just there me were and different June resorts. Squid. Oh, no, oh it was June, hot. right? <laughs> yeah. That's right. And, and it was hot. And it was very hot. It was Atlanta, and it was hot. <laughs> and, but we did get to see some like I've been going to Atlanta for years and saw some incredible parts of Atlanta. I'd only been to the city a bunch. And so, so then we were going to like Douglasville and I forget the other names, but it was gorgeous. Yeah. And now, uh, like I said, there's a, there's a ton of amazing people in this movie. And since you're all in one place, are you guys playing a lot? Is there a lot of improvisation while you're making a film like this? Because at the same time, it does feel very, uh, almost plot heavy at times and beat it out. Like the emotional beats are very specific. Right, that's true. I remember Stephen Merchant you know, Very would funny. improvise. But mostly they're just kind of like these, like one line jokes, right? That he would just try different ones. Yeah, we didn't improvise that much. It was more about finding the, the character within the words. <laughs> but, but yes, Stephen would like just go off on these different, like whenever he got a joke, he would like go off and tr always try these different things. You guys play a troubled married couple, uh, or a married couple in trouble, I guess you could say. Um, a couple uh, in a troubled marriage? Yeah, there you go. There nice. you go. You, let's switch seat. You take this one. <laughs> um, I'm curious, did you guys, had you guys know each other before you had made this? You're perfect together. I was telling you this in the green room. I want Thanks. the two of you to pitch a show together where you're a married couple in trouble. <laughs> Funny you should ask. I appeared on an episode of Friends it was the fourth to the last episode of the entire series. Yeah. And it was, uh, 
it was where, where uh, uh, I gave Phoebe a new name because I was a government worker and she wanted to be, become Phoebe Banana Hammock. And, <laughs> and I was like, hey, what's up? We did friends. She was like, really? But uh, <laughs> yeah. But of course, why would she remember? She did like, how many episodes, you know what I mean? But it was like. But you said I was nice. You, uh, you and was, supportive. Not only were you nice and supportive, she like, I had thrown out a joke and only she heard it. And she was like, we'll do that, do that for the pitch. We're going to do two rehearsals in the pitch. And then I threw out the other one, and it made it into the show. So I was like... Right. Well, you just made it sound like I made the decisions on Friends. <laughs> You're going to do that in a pitch. Yeah, yeah, I think it, I was just like, oh, you should pitch that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Just do it in a pitch. <laughs> yeah. So when you're on a show... I'm really literal. It's like, well, now I sound like I instructed... Very, I very nice. Everything about her is sweet, so don't... that. That's... Not how I meant to come off. Well, I'm wondering when you're on a show for as long as you're on as you're on something like Friends and you're working every day and there are a di like an assortment or a different uh, special guest all the time. When you run into them, are you always kind of like, was I nice? Okay, great, thank you. Great. Um, I'm the fr I don't pick at things, so I don't ask, just in case you know I don't want the answer. But if I was, it's usually offered up. So and he offered it up, so that's good. I tried to be nice. I think I was nice. I don't know. Nicest. I don't know. Okay. The nicest. Yeah, I'm assuming you were always nice. <laughs> uh, Wyatt, you're in, you're incredibly funny in this movie. You're you're very good at playing a character like this. It's a bit like everybody wants. I'm sort of the guy who's lovable but maybe kind of a mess at the yeah. same at the same time. Yeah. Where do you think that comes from? Um, oh God, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Um, well, uh, it was it was fun to be able to do because it was sort of uh, similar when you're start when you're starting out and starting to get jobs. You kind of do one thing; they want you to do the same thing, but you amend it. So shave off the beard and do <laughs> do the same thing, and it comes out with a different result. Um, <laughs> but it, it was it was fun to be able to play with Anna. She's an awesome, uh, an amazing actress, and these guys. And it's pretty easy to fall into a character when you're working with good people. Um, so yeah, I don't know. You kind of read read the script, and people decide that you're the right person for the part. You go and you do it the best you can. Without giving anything away, I love the twist that happens with your character at a certain point in the movie, where he becomes something completely different than what you thought he was at the top. And I'm wondering how you sort of play that when you're playing the scene at the top. Do you sort of embody, you know, that 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 aspect of the character in those scenes, or do you want him to come off as much like an asshole as you possibly can in those early moments? I think that I think that it's it's um, <clears throat> in terms of in terms of playing it, you you just play it as as it is. You don't try and play it with the idea that I know what's going to happen before it happens, so that whatever comes off is natural. It's or organic to what the director is going to be able to do with that performance because giving him the tools to be able to craft it. I think what it's all about. Um, and then when when you decide that it's time to make that change, uh, that change comes more naturally than when you've tried to force something that you haven't maybe even shot yet. Um, so yeah, I think it just it's just do what's on the page and try and find the the reality of whatever that moment would be for you. And you guys, for for you guys at Table Nineteen, it's very much a Breakfast Club heavy heavy vibe. They are the misfits of this wedding. They are in the Saturday detention and finding out if they if they like each other, maybe learning to love each other a little bit. Did you was that a touchstone for this movie when you guys were making it? That's the first time that thought ever even occurred to me. <laughs> really? To compare it with Breakfast Club, but that it works. Well, yeah, because then at the in the center of the movie, when they all kind of get together yeah. and they're talking and yeah. Right, they run off to the like break room or whatever that was to try to get snacks. That's right. We do sort of do that. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> There's that question for me. <laughs> so no. No, it wasn't, wasn't a, touchdown a touchdown for me. Maybe the smarter people that I'm sitting in between <laughs> did. Put it we all know who's the smartest <laughs> yeah. up here. Let's quit playing. <laughs> um, I, I, think, I think there was a, a mention of Breakfast Club, but but we, oh, really? we yeah yeah there, there was no, definitely a, 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 a mention <laughs> at some point. <laughs> but it's not like we were like oh we're doing a breakfast you know Breakfast Club. It was like yeah yeah it was just like you said was, yeah it's kind of a couple things there. So uh, doing a movie like this, you know, it, it, it leads to the person in my position. Uh, I think it's an unenviable position to ask what sort of wedding stories do you guys have that you were thinking about while you were making this? Have you ever been sat at the oddball table at a wedding and, and, and not really wanted to be there? 
to say about this. I, I, have, have, I have something to say about this because okay, I had a revelation while we were making this movie, which is <laughs> I'm always at this table, <laughs> except I always thought it was an honor <laughs> and deeply what? considerate not to put me close to the loud band, which I hate. And so I always felt like, yes, <laughs> You're table. absolutely right because I was at a wedding one time where I was sat with the with the bride and groom and their family at this table next to the band. Nightmare. And I was so mad the whole time. I thought they were torturing me. I was I wanted to be in the back. You're right. Looking at it. I'm always in the back and I'm always thinking, oh, I'm so lucky. God, they they love me because I got the best table. I'm far away from the band. And the dance floor and the cake and everything that's happening <laughs> that has to do with the wedding. Fantastic. Thank and you. Anybody that you could possibly embarrass them in front of. <laughs> Greg, what about you? Do you have any wedding stories that you I, were thinking about while shooting this? I was at that table at my own wedding. So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> Hiding? Hiding? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not married. Uh, I, I was teasing. Um, well, I, you know, um, not. One time, I, you know, I play piano, so I've, I've been a wedding singer at a couple of things. One time, a friend of mine was getting married. She had me play, uh, and, and I was playing it here and now, Luther Vandross. One look in your eyes, there I see. So I'm playing that and singing it. Um, I'm supposed to play it when she comes down the aisle. For whatever reason, somebody's like, yeah, now, you know, and, uh, and the bridal party came down. So now the song, you know, it turned into a half hour of me playing this, singing this, <laughs> this song. So here and now, oh man, how many times can you say it? So yeah, that's, that's my wedding story. I, lo I love the wedding band in, in this movie. They're playing like the best 80s music yeah. possible. I've never been to a wedding that does that. Usually it's like the worst pop music that you could possibly listen to for an hour and a half. It's like yeah. Shania Twain's I Feel Like a Woman on repeat or something. <laughs> Was it somebody from right. the wedding band that, that stole wardrobe? What happened? Oh, I remember don't know. that. No, but I know the the guy who played the guy in the is a very nice guy and didn't steal yeah, anything. Not, not him. That wasn't yeah. him. No, was no, no, he Brad wasn't in Ober, the band. I think Brad okay. Oberhof, Oberhofer is his name. He's really good. Um, Someone made a friend on the set. <laughs> no, he's a good. He's he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's actually a very talented musician. Yeah, I'm not kidding. We all sat in one room for six weeks. <laughs> And the, right, and then whoever you know wasn't working was in the room. Right. So yeah, it was easy. yeah, if you were sitting next to someone, you got to know them. Why? What about you? Do you have any wedding stories that you were thinking about when you took this movie on? I'm, I'm, I am king of going. If you don't want me at your wedding, it's cool. You don't have to invite me. I can stay home, and it's fine. Like. Don't, it's expensive. No passive aggression whatsoever? No, that's none. Not I'm about zero. to say, that's it's a your, definite invite. No, right there. It's, your, it's your day. You, it's expensive. Plates are expensive to, to, to buy. for. It's like 70. Hey, don't invite me. It's totally fine. We're friends. It's awesome. I will come by later and whatever, but it's fine. To the so point where I, your friend's like, why like, really doesn't want to go to the yeah, wedding? Like, like, I thought we were buddies, but... No, I, I love weddings. I love my friends' weddings, but for the periphery, it's like, don't worry, don't worry. I'm good. It's your day. <laughs> so Lisa, you have uh, you have this movie coming out this weekend, and then you also have your show on TLC, yeah. right? Who do you think you are that for the seventh season that you, that you produce? At least the seventh season. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, at TLC you have like, oh, it's season seven B. <laughs> you know, so we make jokes. We're in season like four F. You know, but but anyway, yeah. So it's been since 2010. So I guess that's seven. Yeah. Why'd I waste time on that <laughs> math? <That's interesting. laughs> but yeah, and Courtney Cox is our first person. But <laughs> I cracked you up. You can't even recover. I made you laugh so hard. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Why'd I waste time? Not Courtney Cox is in the show this season. Because <laughs> I assume that's so great. Editing. So what's Co what's Courtney Cox diving into? What are you what are you doing with her? <gasps> Well, I can say it because it's in the promo. Um, she, there's one moment where she says, wait, so you're telling me that my family killed the King of England. <laughs> she thought it was going to be really boring. Whoa. And it's not because her family killed the King of England, the first regicide. Wow. Whoa. That ever happened in England.
Lisa, how did you how did you get into producing the show? I, I know you've produced other shows before. One of my favorite shows that you produ produce and starred in is is The Comeback. It's one of the right. most underrated, amazing. Uh, I think I think comedy shows have come out, um, but this is a completely different uh, yeah. job. How did you get into this? Well, I was working in Ireland and I saw the show on BBC, and I thought it was the best thing I'd ever seen in my whole entire life. Because it was history, except personalized, and it was really emotional, too, potentially. And I just thought it was fantastic. And so I got in touch with the person who created the show. And sure enough, yeah, they did want to do it in the U.S., so I made them, you know, work with me. <laughs> and let me produce it with them. <laughs> Lisa, I have to ask, as someone who uh, like loved, loved the comeback, is there any chance that you're going to produce another show that, that is, that's a vehicle for, for you? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Did you add Craig to the mix with you? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Craig, uh, I mean, yeah. and now there are two that I'm thinking about. All right. <laughs> Craig, you said, uh, you know, you're a musician and you've played a lot of weddings before. When they offered you the role for this movie, did you think that you were going to have to sort of play piano and do some songs? No, no. Once I, I, I read it and it, that didn't... That thought didn't occur to me at all. <laughs> <laughs> He's a diner owner, and they just, you know, and him, he and his wife are, are married 20 plus years, and they, uh, there's a lot of passive aggressiveness and, you know, a lot of mean spirited things said through trying to make it sound like a joke and stuff. So, uh, no, I didn't see any. Isn't that scene. all relationships, though? Is that really a problem in relationships? <laughs> <laughs> Sort of the best relationships. If you can make it a joke, we can just move past this very quickly. That's the hope, yeah. <laughs> Greg, I complimented you on this backstage. Uh, I know we're here for Table 19. We're talking about other projects. But uh, you were amazing in Morris from America. Oh, yes. Uh, last Thank you year. very you much. Were, Thank uh, you. It was such a beautiful performance. <laughs> and Thank you. The, the Oscars were last night. And I, and I think Craig deserved a nomination for, for that <laughs> film. It was unbelievable. If you haven't seen Morris from America... Go see it. It's a really beautiful performance. I, I truly appreciate that. Thank you very much. Are you going to be doing anything more with that with that filmmaker or, uh, or with the kid? Chad Harding? I would love to work with, with with both of them. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If they, you know, come with something that looks great, maybe you know. Yeah, he, he it could was direct great. It. He could direct our new project. Uh huh. <laughs> we do. Uh -huh. he, he wants to see me and Lisa do a project. <laughs> by Chad. Yeah. Can I give a shout out though to uh, Mr. Wyatt Russell? I don't know. Did anybody see Black Mirror? I was going there. Oh my <laughs> God! <laughs> Destroyed. I was. I just. I just saw it like last week, and I was just like, you know, it, it's. I know the man, you know. So to to watch it and then be like transported to that situation, I was just like blown away. So yeah, well done, sir. Thanks, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> Why you've had you, you've had an incredible assortment of roles, starting with. The first time I saw you, I think, was 22 Jump Street, right? And then all of a sudden, you're in Everybody Wants Some, which is one of my favorite movies from last year, hands down. I just thought, I've seen it so many times, it's just a great hangout movie. And that Floyd song in your scene, I listen to all the time now yeah, as well. Fearless. But then from there to, to, to Black Mirror, and then you were in a film with Alex Karpovsky where you played a folk singer, which I thought was really great. No, yeah. How have you been getting all these roles, or how are you choosing them? Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I guess there... I heard Vigo Mortensen say something so cool at uh, like he was getting awarded for being awesome for for a hundred years. <laughs> being Vigo Mortensen. For being Vigo Mortensen, and and he was like, you know, you don't really ch you don't necessarily choose the roles. You kind of get the opportunity to do certain things, and then hopefully they work out. And, and if they don't, you know, that's too bad too. But you just kind of have to go with the flow of the way things are going and how you feel at the moment. And uh, certain things like that movie had come uh, right after sort of not such a great part of my life, and it filled a, v a void that I was like, okay, this is great. This is just for that moment. I which, needed, which movie? Uh, f a folk Hero Funny Guy. Yeah. Um, where I play this musician guy with long beard and hair. And it was just something that I needed to sort of fill up my soul and, and feel good about what, what, what was next. And I met the girl that I'm with now of two years, and it was like, you know, just a great experience uh, outside of just the movie making process. And I think that when you just look at the, the, the role or you just look at the thing, you become myopic about certain things that you can kind of try and like quarter, corner, you, you by way of not any, any of your own doing, corner yourself into certain, uh, certain spots that you might not have foreseen. 
And uh, if you just keep your mind open and go, oh, yeah, I think I can do that, or I think I can do that, and leave it up to the hands of the people, directors and producers who uh, put their trust in you, I think that's kind of the only way you can, you can do it. I, you know, I don't, think, I don't think an actor can make themselves be something or make themselves be a certain way. You know, I don't know. I, don't know. I, 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 put my, I put my roles on a dartboard, and I just... <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be that. <laughs> Were you nervous going into uh, Black Mirror, considering it was such a, a, a different performance for you? No, because uh, because I'm meeting with Dan and Charlie Brooker, Dan Trachtenberg, who directed Ten Cloverfield Lane, which is a great movie too. Uh, you just knew. I just knew. And also, they love movies. We were talking about this back backstage. They being with people who love making movies. I mean, it is everything to them. And they climb inside that world, and when you can go there with them, you feel safe. And so you feel that you can do whatever you want and do whatever you need to do because whatever that moment is, it'll be real, and they'll know how to use it. So it, what, when you feel that sort of comfort and safety from the person that you're working with and for, I don't think you can make wrong moves as an actor because they've instilled their trust in you as well. And we, it was just an amazing experience. So... And we didn't even know what it was going to be really until you do it. You know, you don't know what the what the scene or what the movie's going to take on until you actually do it. And uh, and leaving room leaving room for that when you go do it, I think, is an important thing. Working with the right people helps. Let's uh, get some questions from the audience. Who has one? Someone's got a microphone. Hey guys, what's up? Um, first of all, all three of you are very hilarious, and I love how you have off-screen chemistry. I mean, it seems like you had a lot of fun shooting this film, and it seems like even off-screen you guys have great chemistry, which is really good for actors. Um, I had a question, actually, for you, Lisa. Um, well, me and my friends always say, like, wow, she seems very natural in her roles because we've seen you in Friends and Who Do You Think You Are, Web Therapy and The Comeback. We always say, like, it seems like she's being very natural. It's like, it's Lisa, this is who she is, and this is why she's very successful. Now, I'm not sure if you studied acting back in college, but do you think this is the case when you took, take on a role, like, you want to be you, like, I want to be myself, I want to be natural? Wait, you're saying you think I'm like Fiona Wallace? <laughs> it, <laughs> I'm up there, so like, sorry. I there, really that's the real her. I, uh, that's fantastic <laughs> if you do. I do. I'm you not, think that's I, like, I, I oh, that's natural. more what she's like. Yeah, I mean, I think of uh, you like, as a person. It comes when I see naturally you in roles, to me. You're to natural be the way you are, and this is why you're successful. Self -centered that question was and teetering, and then you just kind no. of. I love it. it. No, no. I'm but sorry. It made no sense. I don't know how to say it. It was just so spontaneous. I'm. You know what? I'm understanding what I want to understand from it. Okay, understand whatever you want from it. All right. You know, I'm just gonna go. Oh. No. <laughs> just kidding. I don't know so what the question it. is. Like, do you? <laughs> you're an awesome no. actor. No, it's not you. Oh, no. thanks. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Basically, that's it. It's a compliment. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. All right. There you go. Well, thank you very much. I'll, 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 no, I'll, I didn't. I'll, I didn't. I'll I didn't study help acting. Help this college. a little bit, Lisa. Yeah, how no often do you do you try to find a, a, a sort of sense of yourself in your characters to try to make it more natural for yourself? Okay. As an yeah. Um, okay. Well, yes. There is a big chunk of me in Fiona Wallace. I'm. <laughs> I am loathsome, full of you know hatred and impatience. Um, that's true, and Valerie Cherish, phony as a, well, I, you know, I don't know. I always found Valerie, oh, like fake the, news. Valerie Cherish know. to be a show made with an incredible amount of love and, and empathy when yes. you watch the comeback. I yeah, never... but I do, I mean, I do, I love her. But, I mean, I know that there are problems <laughs> with her. Not a perfect human being. No, but she's not evil. Um, next question. Uh, we're going to take our next question from an online viewer. So Lauren would like to know, what hypothetical school table would you each sit at? Popular crowd, math nerds, etc. Oh. <laughs> would or did? Yeah, right. I mean, we all were did. alive. I want, I want did. Let's do that. I went out for lunch. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't like being part of clubs or groups. All right. So I was sort of. I sort of sat at three friends who were outside of everything. I kind of sat at uh, well, in I, I went to school in Vancouver for my last two years of high school, and I I don't know what I thought we were cool, but I don't know if everybody else thought it was, it was super cool. I mean, probably. No, no, no. I I don't know. I'm looking at you right now. Phil, Ch <laughs> Phil, 
Phil Chu and, and Rob Goodrich, if you're around, I think, you know, we, when we, would, we were like, we were the play Halo and eat pizza guys. I don't know if that was like the coolest thing to do, but I, I thought it was cool. I imagine you was kind of a floater. Like you could go from the cool table to the other tables to the other tables with a little bit of ease, but maybe you didn't sit directly with no. the most popular people. I also wasn't at school a whole lot because I was playing hockey. Uh, so I was always like, not, not in... Not in school. I don't know. I had to write a letter to the Ministry of Education to actually graduate 12th grade. Because I, didn't, I missed a lot of class. But not hooky. Hockey. No, hockey. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, yes. Actual hockey. No, not hockey. 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 Ice, ho- ice like hockey. No. Real hockey player. I sat with the choir kids. Yes. Explain. I was in the choir. And we, you know, the choir kids hung out. <laughs> Next question. Hi, it's nice seeing all of you. I'm a big fan of your work, Craig, especially the Hot Tub Time Machine movie. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I wanted to know, if there was, what is your ideal role, and what is your favorite project that you've done so far, and what advice would you give somebody that's trying to make it? All right, first of all, is that, a, is that a Chicago Bulls? Uh, yeah. Yeah, right on. I'm from Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you very much. Um, ideal role is, you know, it, that's ever expanding. Um, after doing some, some dramatic work, uh, uh, you know, playing with, 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 with people like this and, and just growing, it, it's, I know there's more to mine out of me. So I want to do something that just takes me there. You know what I mean? Just, just, so I don't, I don't know what, how to answer ideal role. Um, and I forgot your next two questions. What was it? Was the hot tub real and was it actually a time? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Uh, oh, you know, I, I, and it, this is all the projects I do. I mean, you can see how much fun we have. Even the, the, like you alluded to, you know, it was, it was this all the time. Um, but there was one we did called, a deal called Peoples. And what made that, took that a notch further was because there was a piano on set. And, you know, so I, and then everybody was singing harmony. And, like, so it was, like, several days of that. They just made it, like, you know, crazy fun and good. And uh, as far as advice, which I don't tend to, you know, give out because, you know, your path is your path. But the only thing I would say is, is you're the only you that's out there. So we need to see who that is. You know what I mean? Wait, by the way, can I just say that it's a fun set because of Craig, because he is so fun and so nice and gets everybody like doing something. He'll just break out into a song, and then all of a sudden Anna's singing with him, and you have a, oh, like, yeah. like a concert yeah. that you get to see these two. Like, we're not paying anything. Yeah, Craig, Craig brings joy. And you get joy. to see Craig Robinson and Anna Kendrick singing something. And then he'd just go over to a piano and play, and people just come over and start singing. It's, he's an event. Yeah, Craig, he Craig, makes Craig, it, it's Craig like brings joy, joy to joy, every moment. Joy, joy. Guys. It's true. It's like, he does. it's mandatory yeah. for you, and it's exactly what you need on a set, too. They came, they came to my Easter party. I had a... <gasps> that was we're, so we're, fun. We're, Easter happened during our movie, and so I, I had a... It was this great chef uh, sh- uh, uh, who I hired... And, uh, and they showed up to my Easter party in my little apartment that, you know, they rented for us. And I, it was just nice to have a clean apartment. So I was like, yeah, let me bring some people over. <laughs> it was so good. I think we have time for one more question right there. Hi. Um, so I just want to say that, um, Lisa, I'm a huge fan of Phoebe. And actually, that episode with Princess Consuela Banana Hammock was my favorite episode in Friends. So I hear yes. Craig was in there. Yes, he was in there. <laughs> Yeah, so I want to ask, I'm sure, I think that Lisa's married, I'm not sure for Craig and Wyatt. For your wedding, did you have like a table 19, like a loser table? No, we didn't. No, everyone was there because we wanted them there. There was no like obligatory, no. They only had 18 tables. (laughs) (laughs) 
You guys, Table 19 is, is so funny. You're fantastic, and everybody is so great. It comes out this Friday, right? This Friday? Yeah. And your show is airing on TLC this weekend as well? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday Courtney night. Cox. Sunday night, Courtney Cox. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.